Um, I grew up in Ulster County uh, at the intersections of the towns of Lloyd, Esopus, and New Paltz on a farm. Um, since 1944. Uh, where did you go to school? I went to uh, grade school in New Paltz. I went to college in Cortland and in Marist. Okay. What was the, when was the first time you came into contact with the bridge? Well, probably uh, was passing it my whole life on the Mid-Hudson Bridge. Uh, the um, first time that I can remember being aware of it, we were crossing the Mid-Hudson Bridge in a car, and there was a train crossing the railroad bridge, and my parents pointed that out, and that was the first time I understood what it was for. I think I read about it in the newspaper, and I contacted Bill Seppi, and I became a member of the uh, organization, and I did their newsletters, and uh, tried to get other people interested in it, and sold planks, which was one of our fundraising efforts. Um, uh, Probably the enormous uh, engineering feat that it was in its day. Um, my husband's great-grandfather was one of the original um, people who wanted to see the bridge built back in the 1870s. And um, we live on the Hudson. We live exactly right across from Marist, in fact. So I see the bridge all the time. And uh, it just is just such a beautiful structure. Um, the fact that it's built with Rosendale cement makes it very special, and um, uh, we watched it burn uh, both times. It actually had two fires on it. The first one um, was the May 8th fire that really destroyed it, and then several years later, I think somebody shot some fireworks up into it, and there was a small fire. And at that time, they had learned how to put them out better, and they used a, um, a helicopter with water to put it out, and we watched that too. So. It's always been part of my life. Um, have you ever been on the bridge? Yes. Okay. Yes. Like, is it, um, have, like, do you go often or like once in a while? Or? Well, it's not open. Uh, so you can only go when they have tours. But the first time I went up, I went up, um, I was supposed to meet Bill Seppi and we were going to walk out on the bridge. It was in January, and it was really cold, and the wind was blowing, and the ice was crashing into the um, piers, and it was very loud. Um, and Bill had gone on ahead and walked out on the bridge, so I actually went out on it by myself. And it was uh, a moment of true courage on my part, because when you walk out on the bridge, uh, you have a choice of what you're going to walk on. You can either walk on the railroad ties, which have about a 10-inch gap, between them. So when you're walking, you have to look down. And when you look down, you can't help but looking down, look down the 212 feet to the river. Then if you don't want to walk on that, you can walk on the uh, steel gratings, which are on the side. Um, and they have very long expanses between uh, the larger t um, ties that come out. So looking down at them, you don't even see them. You just, it looks like you're stepping off the tie into the river. So I chose to walk on the many ties and look down at that. And after a while, it stopped bothering me, and now I've been out other times too, and it's, there's nothing to it now. But that first time was between the storm and the uh, ice, and the, it was exciting. And the view is unparalleled. Thank you. Businesses that depended on the railroad for um, like supplies or 
not in. not in my lifetime, um, but uh, there used to be a trolley that ran from Highland to New Paltz, and uh, it stopped running in 1925. But prior to that, there was what was known as the Bud Car, and that was a tiny, uh, uh, like a trolley car that would come across the railroad bridge from Poughkeepsie bring passengers over here, they would get off down at the New Paltz Landing, which was in Highland, and then they'd take the trolley to New Paltz. So there were um, race races, horse races in New Paltz, and there were um, the M M Mohonk and Minnewaska, the huge um, uh, tourist destinations. Um, there were uh, businesses like the casino in New Paltz, which was a dance hall. And people came from Poughkeepsie to go to those. And then, of course, people went the other direction to go to uh, theater in Poughkeepsie. Um, the other th way it was used, New Paltz had what was called the Normal School. And the Normal School was the precursor of SUNY New Paltz. So you had a lot of people who would take the Bud Car from Poughkeepsie, then the trolley from New Paltz, and that's how they would go to college every day. So there were a lot of businesses in New Paltz and all, all along the way that uh, were in a way um, dependent on the amount of traffic they could get from Poughkeepsie over there. Okay. Um, have you heard of any other ideas to, in a way to like re recycle the bridge, like a way to reuse the bridge other than walkway? Like were there any other ideas? There were a lot of ideas. There were, um, people wanted to take it down and sell it for scrap. Um, people wanted to build stores on it. Uh, people wanted to build apartments on it. Uh, you know, there are always a million ideas out there. Uh, Thank you. Um, I want to talk about board of Walkway Road Hudson. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree with Bill Seppi's view on the direction of Walkway Road Hudson? Yes, in a general way that the, the end product I agreed with, that it made a lot of sense to turn it into a walkway, into a way that uh, the people of both counties and actually people from all over the world could get up on it and use it and make it a tourist uh, draw for this area. So in that, yes, I agreed with him. Um, did you agree with how he was going about, how he wanted to go about completing the project? No, I did not. <laughs> um, and that's why I left, because it just seemed like it was hopeless. OK. Uh, what do you think of, the, of how the project is being pursued today? Well, I'm not on the board, and uh, my only real relation to it has been that I've helped them put together their newsletter until they could get uh, someone within the organization to be responsible for it. Um, I'm very happy with everything that's happening, with the amount of uh, attention it's getting. Um, I would have been very happy if Bill Seppi's idea of uh, being able to raise the money privately could have taken place, um, but it couldn't. It would have cost a lot more money to tear the bridge down. Um, than to turn it into a walkway. And so, in, in a way, I'm thrilled. Um, you're a publisher, you're, you're the publisher of About Town. Um, is, how does, um, does that cover, does that talk about the bridge and the project a lot? Or? Uh, it, about Town is a very small area guide. It covers just the southern part of Ulster County. And I have done stories on the bridge. Uh, it's mostly a calendar of events. And then I do a story either on history of the area or natural history of the area, two or three stories. Um, it's not a newspaper. It's quarterly. Um. <coughs> has played for the community? In, well, in its history, it's played a huge role in the way, uh, if you're talking about the community in Ulster County, end of it, 
um, a lot of the people who came to work on the bridge, the laborers, were of Italian uh, origin. And um, Highland, since those days, has always been known as an Italian community. Um, if you look back on any of the um, books of the government of the town of Lloyd and so forth, many, many of the names end in vowels. Um, we also uh, have always had uh, Italian food in Highland. Uh, a lot of um, uh, zucchini recipes you'll find in all the church bulletins and so forth. Uh, so it, it, in that way it had a huge impact. And then again when um, the, uh, the bridge would be part of the trolley system, again, even my grandmother would come to, um, she'd walk out to the end of North Eltings Corners Road to 299 where the trolley went through, uh, take, the, take the trolley to Highland to be able to um, uh, pick up uh, piecework. She, was, she would sew piecework. Um, so a, a lot of the stuff that went on uh, always had the transportation part of it uh, and that was linked to the bridge because I don't know that the trolley would have been as successful as long as it was had it not been for uh, the, the railroad bridge making the connection to Poughkeepsie and the larger population area. Well, I think it would be important to extrapolate what it might mean for the area. Um, there are many, many railroad buffs, many people who like beautiful views, many people who just want to do something unusual and be able to write home about it. I think it will be a, a very big tourist draw for our area and in that way it's going to create a lot of uh, employment because tourism is really the industry of New York State anymore. So I, I think that's an important one. Um, my husband's uncle used to talk about walking across the bridge um, years ago. I mean, we're talking, you know, 1930s. And um, one time he walked across it in a snowstorm. I, I can't imagine what that must have been like. Um, uh, after I was no longer involved with the board, <coughs> um, Bill Seppi would appoint board members, and uh, when he was no longer happy with their performance, when they no longer agreed with him, um, he would just reappoint someone else to the position. At least that's the way the story goes, since I was not privy personally to any of this. But I do know that not much was happening. And um, finally, the uh, membership got together and said, we insist that we have a true election. Um, and that's what happened. We had a true election uh, of the board members. New board members were elected, and uh, Bill stayed on for a while, and then eventually he left. Uh, but had it not been for Bill Seppi, none of this would have happened. I mean, none of the, the bridge would not be being turned into a walkway. He was um, absolutely instrumental in bringing the plight of the bridge to 
the attention of both communities on the east and west sides. So I'm ever grateful to Bill Seppi. Well, I think you two should go up there yeah. as soon as possible. <laughs> I think you should. Uh, it, it'll give you just such a different feeling about why people become so exercised over this issue um, and why people have, for so many years, um, worked very hard. I mean, the gentleman in the other room has been up there with hammer and nails and uh, you know, stringing electrical things and trying to keep the Coast Guard happy with the lights on it and so forth. Um, and it just, it's inspirational. It really is. I mean, just, when you realize that it's over 6,700 feet long, I mean, that's, uh, that's quite a span. It was considered a, one of the wonders of the world in its day. And, uh, you know, when you look at all those. I, I have a question that <coughs> Given present-day environmental causes and protecting the earth and so forth, do you think it's important to educate, you know, people of a different generation, just you know, how important that industrial age was to the city, particularly in the neighboring areas, and you know, I mean, we all think of factories dumping smoke and so forth, but that's really what sort of got most of these cities started up and down the Hudson River. Absolutely. That's an important part of preserving this river? Absolutely. I mean, if you could elaborate on that a um, Well, I, I think you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, when I said before about the, the engineering feat and the, not, the, um, the techniques that were used to build the bridge, uh, the number of people who were involved in it, from the engineering staff down to the laborers, it was an enormous effort. It was enormously expensive at the time. Um, there were a couple of different bankruptcies, as I recall reading. Um, my husband's great-grandfather, who was one of the 1871 group, um, he eventually did, was not involved in it anymore after it went bankrupt the first time. People lost money, um, and yet they kept coming back because it was, it was something that was so needed in the area. And um, Poughkeepsie was growing, and this side of the river had a lot of uh, produce that was um, being grown, and it needed to be shipped to different places. The Hudson River was just a great uh, north-south access, but um, there was nothing that could uh, get things across the river as efficiently as a railroad. Um, and, I, and I think the, uh, uh, that whole era of the 1870s to the uh, 1915 or 1920 when you had the Brooklyn Bridge and you had all of the great monuments in New York and you had uh, the Panama Canal. I mean, all of these incredible engineering feats that um, we just take for granted now. And uh, so I, I do think it has that place too for teaching about the industrial history of the area. So would you say that because um, in a sense like a lot of people who are born here have stayed, but many people who have, they realize that it's probably their ancestor, their grandparents that actually put their effort into making the bridge, that it's so important to them to keep it up and like as a monument of what their grandparents built. So, you know, you just brought up one of my favorite topics <laughs> about uh, maybe five years ago. Um, some professors at Albany did a study of the 300, excuse me, 3,600 counties in the United States, and the um, object of it was to ascertain the rootedness of the people who lived in these counties to the counties, and that included everything from civic engagement. Uh, how long people had owned businesses, how long their families had lived there, uh, where they had gone to school, uh, just a whole range of uh, possible ways that would indicate how you felt about your community. And out of the 3,600 counties, Ulster County was number three. 
Uh, and I think that may be part of even why I feel the way I do about this area. Um, when my grandparents bought their farm in 1921, um, to me, it was a miracle that my family ended up here. And uh, I'm so grateful to all of these people, the people who built the bridge, the, my grandparents for buying the farm. Um, it, uh, it's like you get your, your roots into this soil and you can't let go. It's great. You're welcome. This was fun. You guys, good. We may have, I, I've been back and forth, so I haven't heard, you know, how this went. Uh, about, about this? About, uh, or? Well, about your, you, you know, you were just talking kind of about your own experience in the community. Is anything about that? Or about um, the walkway? Any of those things that you feel like um, is significant to the project? Oh, well, actually, actually, um, I, I would like to mention something. And in fact, I, I wish I had uh, brought in something from my car. But um, the, uh, uh, we, we live directly across from Marist. And uh, our, our house is uh, on the site of what was a five-story hotel. And that was owned built and owned by the same um, Abram Hasbrook, who was the, involved with the 1871 group uh, who tried to start the bridge. And um, that hotel burned in 1904, right after it went out of, our fam out of my husband's family. But we still have a lot of the um, things from the hotel, things like menus and letters and uh, my husband's great-grandmother's um, uh, sort of diary of who who was doing what and it's incredible the amount of traveling people did in those days uh, they they just thought nothing of you know getting on a boat going to New York going to a show whatever they were going to do down there getting back on the boat coming back up here taking the trolley or taking the train going someplace else and they just did this all the time and we always think of you know the people in the eight, late 1800s being pretty cement bound to where they were because there there wasn't the ease of travel but actually there was not not really I mean I, I could go in a hundred directions but I, I think we want to stay around the bridge You're welcome. This was fun. And they came and took pictures of the, um, the foundations because they're still very visible. And then they also took the uh, picture that we have of the Bellevue Villa, which is taken from uh, the river up and uh, shows how, uh, interestingly, when you look now from this side of the river to the other side, you see a lot of trees. Back in the 1880s, it was clear cut. It was fields everywhere. It was all used to grow currants and grapes and um, apples and wheat. And I mean, it was just all farm. If, if they could, you know, get two rocks out of the way, they would plant something. Uh, so it's just, you know, a completely different place than what you're seeing today. Where's your house? Is it, is it you know where the Marist finish line is? The, the, it, I don't know, at least it used to be there when I was in college. There's an X. And then oh, if you. you on the river. On the river side, because actually our property comes down to that on, on the other side of the, this side of the railroad track. There's a little point that comes out, and Maris used to have its crew finishing uh, line there. Do you know what I mean? So if, if I'm like, you know, if we're standing over here and looking across the river, right. and the railroad bridge is down there, and you can see where it's coming, right. you're north of that. Yes, I'm right across from you. So I, I look at the library. Uh, uh, there's a house right on the tracks there. We're up on the cliff. Okay, I know. Right. 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 Yeah, there's no there. house in front of us. Okay. There's a structure though right on the tracks. Like if we look like if we go out here and we look down the road that takes us, you know, below the um, the dorms and mid rise and so forth. 
It seems like there's a small house or some sort of structure. It's right on top of the tracks. The tracks don't make sense. I don't know if it's a boathouse or if it's like part of a small marina or something. But to my knowledge, there's nothing down there. <laughs> uh, we have a deck that's halfway down the cliff. Uh, but if, if you look across the river, you, you can't see our house very well because it's dark brown. And sometimes when the sun is coming up, you'll just see our windows. But in front of our house is a cliff. Then there's a, a, a deck that we built. And then there's stairs going up to our house. But we're, oh, I want to say, 200 feet up. Uh, and from our deck, you, you'd have to climb down a cliff. In fact, we had a, one of our dogs fell over the cliff. And um, we had to have people come from the uh, Shawangam group and rappel down over the cliff to find the dog, who was not hurt, amazingly. She was very tiny, so she didn't. And of course, for years, we had cut stuff and thrown it over there, so it was very springy, and she landed on that. But uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, our house is the highest house over there. And there's a white house to the south of us, I mean, to the north of us, a big white house. The low, long house? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I look right across at that house. From my yeah. House. Well, just look so south of south it. Of okay. um, one, two. We would be the third one, but the highest one. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's where Bellevue Villa was. Yeah. Yeah. And people would come up on the Hudson River Day Line to that, to the train station. And then they'd come by horse and buggy. There was actually a dug road up the face of the cliff so that uh, people could just go right to the hotel.